of you might have attended uh, our first Econ Fest in Lahore. This is our second one. And as you can see, the theme is Isla. What is Isla? Isla is reform, correction, it's change. Why are we so reform averse? I think this is something we'll discuss uh, today and tomorrow. Just this morning while driving to uh, this Park China City, Park China Center, Islam is definitely an Arabic word. I was just thinking that even if you think of Islam, it asks you to think, rethink, ishtihad, reform, Islam, tajdeed, revive. इससे आपको पॉलिटिक्स भी मिलेगी क्योंकि पॉलिटिकल इकोनॉमी आई थिंक इन द एंड इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इसमें आपको चाइल्डहुड पे मिलेंगे इस पर आपको डेमोक्रेसी पे मिलेंगे इस पर आपको हेल्थ पे मिलेगा इस पर आपको एजुकेशन पे मिलेंगे इस पर आपको इन्फ्लेशन बिजनेसेस टेक्नोलॉजी ऊपर एक पूरा हमारा टेक्स जोन है क्योंकि टेक्नोलॉजी के बगैर अब लाइफ इम्पॉसिबल है आने वाला वक्त जो है वो एक डिजिटल डिवाइड का वक्त है जो टेक्नोलॉजी में पीछे रह जाएगा तो पीछे रह जाएगा हम यहाँ कैसे पहुंचे It's not as if we haven't thought of reforms ever. We have. I mean, every now and then we we hear about economic reforms, about governance reforms, judicial reforms, election reforms, local government reforms. But somehow, somehow, none of that reform has taken us to where those reforms intended. If you look at at our gdp growth this is this has been our trend boom bust boom bust boom bust got to navi why it has been so i think there are ever since pakistan was born if you recall we had a conversation with gus papanek Gus Papanegi was the first guy who came to Pakistan, well, one of the early guys with the Harvard Advisory Group. And they made policies for us. And he said we were not equipped to make policies and therefore the US aid or the Harvard Advisory Group set up, the Haq had, Mahbub al-Haq and the Harvard Advisory Group set up a planning commission and pipe. But somehow in this country we have not been able to mainstream economic thinking. We have economics graduates. We have PAI. We have a few other think tanks, but our policy makers don't look to them. They look beyond them. They look elsewhere. And most important of all, our policy makers think that they know it all. Everybody in the government thinks solution to ham sab ke paas hai. Implement nahi hoti. To implement aap khud khud karne nahi hoti. Implement is ki nahi hoti kyunki hamare paas solutions hi nahi hai. We don't have solutions kyunki hamne deeply socha hi nahi. तो अनफॉर्चुनेट इसलिए हम ये कॉन्फेस कर रहे हैं हमारी ग्रोथ आप देखें अप एंड डाउन है इसके अगर अगर आप देखें हमारी इन्वेस्टमेंट और प्रोडक्टिविटी रेट जो सी है बहुत ही लो है दुनिया में सबसे लो हमारी प्रोडक्टिविटी रेट है उससे आगे चले तो आप देखें हमारी इन्वेस्टमेंट रेट दुनिया में सबसे लो है क्या वजह है क्या हम इन्वेस्ट नहीं कर सकते अभी इनकेपेबल ऑफ थिंकिंग ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज अभी इनकेपेबल ऑफ वर्किंग हार्ड दीज आर क्वेश्चन दैट यू हैव टू आस्क योर सेल्फ You have to ask you. You are young people. Have to ask it. कि क्या हम क्या कर सकते हैं? उसके बाद obsession to going to the IMF. Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. The next session we'll talk about it. But right now, they can. We've been to the IMF for 24 times now. 23 times. There's the 24th program. And inshallah, we'll have the 25th. Inshallah, we'll have the 26th. Inshallah, we'll have the 27th. Do we have the will to get out of the IMF? What is the IMF? IMF is the emergency ward of the world. आप उस बंदे को जो emergency ward बार बार जाएगा उसको क्या कहेंगे? यार ये क्या हो रहा है माइक को? आप उस बंदे को जो बार बार emergency ward जाएगा उसको क्या कहेंगे? What can you do? So there are all these issues that we'll discuss. अब उसके बाद ये देखिए, please. This is great. Please note the date. This is 1950 or something. Yeah. Our forefathers had guessed it right. We are on these crutches. You see, Arabic. Huh? Okay, drone is going. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, forefathers had it right. 
we are in crutches of aid, we are in crutches of development, of, of funding. We don't think, we don't, we don't think that we don't think that our crutches are aid. Kiye. But we are stuck on them. The other thing that is a very fun session, you should think about it. Now all your young people, you are going to save. Where are you going to invest? We will tell you that there are investment opportunities in Pakistan or that there are or that there are not going to happen. We don't talk about that there are financial markets and investment opportunities. We will talk about it. The third session is very important. It is a related, very good session. We don't have to take permission for everything. If you want to do something, I have to take permission for it. We have to take street bending, we have to take the street bending, we have to take the street bending. So if you have to take everything, if you have to take entrepreneurship, then what will happen? So quite frankly, this session will highlight this session. Madam, don't just think of women. Sir, I asked you about your favorite sessions. You have to ask your own questions. अब मैं ये स्पेशली स्टूडेंट्स से कहूँगी, प्लीज इस जो हमारी प्रोग्राम की बुकलेट है, इसको संभाल के रखें। आपके पास इस बुकलेट में आने वाले 10 साल के लिए रिसर्च एजेंडा है। किसी ने थीसिस करना है, किसी ने टर्म पेपर करना है। इट्स फुल ऑफ रिसर्च आइडियाज़ और रिसर्चर्स भी ऑफ कोर्स। क्योंकि वजह क्या होती है जी लोग इसको फेंक के चले जाते हैं। आइडियली हम पेपर पे नहीं जाना चाह रहे थे एंड वी जस्ट वांटेड टू कीप इट डिजिटल। देन समबडी सेड कि व्हाई डू यू थिंक एवरीबडी हैज अ स्मार्टफोन। नॉट एवरीवन कैन एक्सेस द डिजिटल कॉपी। सो वी गोट इट प्रिंटेड। तो प्लीज इसको फेंकिएगा Okay, so thank you so much. This was just a curtain raiser for what you should expect in the coming two days. Or this ke saath hi hum will shift to our next session. Thank you. Masood has worked in the World Bank and rose to the position of Vice President. He was a very important man in the World Bank. Then he did something very wise. He decided to cross over into the fund. So he rose to being the director of the Middle East in the fund and the director of the External Affairs Department in the fund, which is, you can think of it as a secretary in the fund administration. So he was the secretary in two departments and he ran the Middle Eastern Department, which is the one Pakistan, where Pakistan is in the Middle Eastern Department. So if you want to ask anybody questions on the program, he's the right man. He did the program in Nawaz Sharif's time, so he is the right man that should ask about those things and about the fund programs. Now, I'm very honored that Masood gave us the time to be here. He's stopping only for a day in Islamabad to talk to us. So please use this time wisely. So let me begin by asking Masood to give you a rare insight into something that you aap long ko nahi pata chalta. Sir, hum isko bilingual rakhenge isliye because you've got some foreigners. So, but ye hai ke Masood saas mein ye pooshna chahunga pehla sawaal ki ji international development bohut sari chizhe ho rahi hai. Abhi ya rahe hai Marrakesh se jaha IMF ki World Bank ki meeting ho rahi thi. He's been to many international fora, he speaks on them, he talks about them. So he's going to tell you some very interesting things about what is happening in the international economy in terms of development thought and in terms of what to expect in the future. Mr. Sir. Thank you, Rokh Sob. First of all, I have to say, this is fantastic. I mean, congratulations to you and to all your team just to be able to get all of these students and most of the people in the room are students together. I mean, it's a great team. So, great. Secondly, my plea to you is, let's make this a conversation. Please, aap sawal uthai. Mere paas jawab honga, so mein jawab dunga. Nahi to kum se kambo sawali mein le jaunga, apne saath to think about. So, please, let's make this as interactive as possible. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail of the world economy, um, but here are three things about the world economy which I took away from the time I was in Marrakesh. Because they had the annual meetings of the World Bank and the IMF. The annual meeting is not in Washington, it's not in Washington. It's not in Marrakesh. The first thing is, that if you look out for the next few years, the world economy is slowing down. Productivity is falling. And so, what does that mean for a country like Pakistan? You can't rely on a very buoyant world economy which we have to do So, first thing you should remember, world economy is slowing down. 
not just this year, next year, but agle paal saal. Second thing, interest rates aapne dekha yahan bad gaya, saari zindiya mein bad gaya. Interest rates are now all time high in the US. Two, three, four years tak interest rates will remain higher for longer. So you know, we've got very used to cheap money for the last many many years. Interest rates were running at close to zero. Now, why does that matter to us? Matters to us because when interest rates are high, all the debt that we like, and you know, Pakistan is a country that likes to borrow. Then the cost of borrowing becomes higher. And the second thing that happens is that the investments we need to make become less profitable. If you borrow money for part of your investment, then it becomes less profitable. And also, when you go to the market to borrow internationally, you don't find so many people who are interested in chasing you. Because when money is cheap, a country like Pakistan goes and says, "Maji, I'll pay five percent interest on a dollar." So a lot of investors who are sitting on assets. They are getting one percent or less than one percent. वो कहते ठीक है यार थोड़ी सी रिस्क लेके let's put it in Pakistan. Today, in the U.S., I can invest in a T-bill, U.S. government T-bill, and get five percent. So if a country like Pakistan comes and says we'll give you seven percent, I mean, people say well, I've got five percent. यार काफी है. So it becomes harder to get the money also. So interest rates are a big issue for a country like Pakistan. Third thing I want to say is that everyone feels that looking ahead, the economy in which we live, the world in which we live, is going to be a world in which there are going to be shocks more often, more frequent, deeper shocks. Let's look back. Nobody knew COVID was coming. Nobody knew that Russia would invade Ukraine. Price of food would go up. Price of energy would go up. We were in Marrakesh, and nobody knew that the Israel-Gaza war would start. So there are shocks that are coming, and I think we don't know what the next shock will be. But I'm confident that in our lifetime, certainly in your lifetime, there will be another pandemic. Like COVID, so there will be shocks that will come. So, what does that mean for a country? It means that we have to become more resilient to shocks, and the international system also has to become more resilient to shocks. So, I would say these are the three big takeaways that I took about the world economy and where it's going. We can discuss what that means for development, how we think about development, how we think about institutions. But those three things are are worth remembering. I think the very very last note, we are all keep saying. But you know what I mean? That if this is one of the things, global environment is very difficult for countries like Pakistan. It is difficult to borrow, and you know that we are thinking about borrowing. We have a lot of debt. We have about 80 billion per year for the next three years. We have about 80 billion per year for the next three years. We have about 80 billion per year for the next three years. We have about 80 billion per year for the next three years. हमारे पास ये इंटरेस्ट रेट की जो बात कर रहे हैं इट बिकम मोर एंड मोर एक्सपेंसिव तो हम क्या करेंगे तो ये बताइए जो ग्लोबल थिंकिंग में पॉलिसी मैनेजमेंट पे डेवलपमेंट पे उसमें क्या नई चीजें आ रही हैं देखिए मैं आई कैन शेयर विथ यू हाउ आई सी द हाउ आर थिंकिंग अबाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ डेवलपमेंट हैज चेंज You know, I look back. I worked in development, like many people in this room, for many years, many decades. I think there are three or four things that have that I take away from this experience, which have a bearing on the question that Nadeem asked. Pehli baat to ye hai ke, you know, when you look back 30, 40 years, our thinking about development was quite limited in terms of. What we were trying to achieve and what we thought would bring about improvement in living standards. If you go back to the 1960s, Mahatma Gandhi thinking, "Yeh thi ke bas labour or capital, 
these countries don't have capital, if you give them capital, you'll see improvement. Now we understand that development is a much more complex process. What determines how you use capital, people start talking about policies, policies if it's institutions, institutions if it's governance, governance if it's elite capture, societal transformation. So it's a very big and complex thing. And what I've seen in, across countries, one of the advantages of working in a place as a World Bank, IMF, you get exposed to many countries. And the one thing I've seen is that the countries that have really transformed themselves, they had a, their own strategy. And it was a sustained hard work over many, many decades and predictable policies over the period. So that investors who are in this framework may invest. You can have good or bad policies. That makes a difference. But more important also is to have predictability of policy. I would go to this is the frame in which we are going to invest, we are going to make returns. And it's mostly a country-driven process. You know, development agencies like to use country ownership. It's a bit of lip service. But fundamentally, without the countries driving it, the second thing I've learned over this time is okay, the role of international institutions, but not just the World Bank, because we talk about the World Bank a lot, but the international institutions. Unka role is actually quite limited. They can't really shape the process of national development. Well, it has to come from within the country. And then I would say the third thing I've learned is okay, macro. I'm at the count of macro, no? basically looking at macro imbalances. Okay, macro, Joel, this is something you want to deal with in a way that it doesn't cause you to spend too much time on it. You, do, you had a chart a little while ago, I think Rana put up a chart which showed how often Pakistan goes to the IMF. So if we can discuss why it goes to the IMF so often, but uska natiya hi hota hai. Public policy ka focus becomes on managing the books, short term account handling, how to avoid another boom bus cycle. There's a fundamental reform for discussion on that in any country, which is what this is all about. That gets sidelined. And frankly, you, the thing about macro is that you want to avoid getting it wrong, but getting it right is only the basics. So if you have all your energy and all your time policy makers, you have macro management, then you're never going to focus on the things that really get you from one point to the other. So, and the, and the final thing I'll say, at least I've taken away the lesson on development is, okay, there are really no shortcuts. In so many countries, you see, they come up with some grand scheme, big project that's going to solve the problem. Actually, I don't think that there's much experience of shortcuts having doing anything. Or in shortcut your people talk about a lot is let's do debt restructuring. If you go and get our debt restructured, this will solve a lot of our problems. But you see, I mean, we can talk about debt restructuring if you're interested, but debt restructuring is also very often a more a complex and difficult thing which in itself doesn't solve anything unless it's part of a broader reform strategy. So I think all of these things are, are lessons to take away about development. I'm glad you raised the issue of debt restructuring. You know, we are close to default. And uh, for the last year or year and a half, TVs have been yelling every night, default for it, default for it, it will happen, it will happen. solution is our economists. कुछ अफसोस आता है कि वो बार-बार आके कहते हैं डेट रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग कर दो 
तो ये डेथ निश्चित है कि हमारे मांगने से एक दिन में हो जाएगी बड़ा आसान काम है क्या इससे क्या कौन से कुछ रहा समझा दीजिए हमें कि क्या होती है डेथ रिस्ट्रक्चर देखिए फर्ज करें आप एक कंपनी है और आपने देखा कि आपके किसी वजह से भी और आपका कर्जा बहुत बढ़ गया आपकी बैलेंस शीट पे प्रॉब्लम है आपके पेमेंट्स नहीं कर सकते आप बैंक देन यू से टॉक टू आर बैंक कि भाई हम आपके जो रिपेमेंट्स है वो पूरे नहीं कर सकते पहली बात तो ये है कि आई थिंक वेन यू गो टू योर बैंक फॉर डेट रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग आप उनसे कह दीजिए हमने जो अगले पेमेंट से ये हम इसको आप जरा ये रीप्रोफाइल कर दें थोड़ा इसको डिले कर दें या ये ये कि बेसिक कमी कर दें इवन बेटर सो फर्स्ट थिंग देर आप भाई ये तो आपकी बात ठीक है विल टॉक अबाउट इट बट वट यूर बिजनेस प्लान आपकी कंपनी के जो ये प्रॉब्लम है How are you going to fix these problems? What's your strategy? You have high costs. You have low returns. You have no sales. So what's, what is your, within which you are going to do this debt restructuring? And if you just say to them, "Nee, we will do it. It will take time. We will do all that. In the meantime, can you just please forgive the debt?" I think your banker is going to be a little bit less supportive of you. So I would say, if you sometimes countries are forced to restructure debt. nobody goes into debt restructuring because they want they get forced into it because they have no alternative but when you go into it you have to recognize two things one is that you need to have a broader business plan for the country which is compelling and which explains to people you know this strategy may ye hissa debt restructuring ka but look at all these other things we are doing pehli baat dusri baat ye you have to be prepared that it is a painful and i mean i don't want to get uh, use words that that are excessive but it can be humiliating as a process you know there used to be the paris club this still is the paris club paris club mein sabse zyada jo hai official debt restructuring ka jo framework hai the paris club and if you are the country that goes to the paris club to get your debt restructured with the creditors hote and they make it very clear to you during the two days or a week that you are there that you are there asking for something and they are there giving it and i think that's something that is inherent in the way debt restructuring is done and today for example debt is a big problem for a number of countries aaj bhi ke kareeb 40% low income countries jo hai they have big debt problem But most of them are not going into debt restructuring because they know that once you go down that tunnel, it's dark, it's long, it's unpredictable. You don't know when you're going to come out, and you don't know with what you're going to come out. So, what I say is, the better you can try to avoid this as much as you can. So, my my sense is, look, it may well be that sometimes it makes it's the only option. When it's the only option, you do what you have to do. We can't do something, but. Don't think of it as a shortcut solution. कि बाद ये कर लें तो फिर बाकी मुश्किल काम हमने नहीं करने पड़ेंगे. Because that is not going to get you anywhere. Yet at this moment, how many countries debt restructuring मांग रही हैं या मांगने की कैफियत रख रही हैं या उनकी सोच है और वो किस मुसीबतों से गुजर रही हैं उसके साथ साथ एक और चीज़ है कि debt restructuring में कुछ लोग तो आ सकते हैं. For example, World Bank तो restructure नहीं करता, IMF restructure नहीं करता. कमर्शियल क्रेडिटर्स भी तो हैं कमर्शियल क्रेडिटर्स करें एंड देन द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ चाइना इन पर भी थोड़ी बात कर दे सो डेट रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग द टॉपिक दैट गेट्स पीपल वेरी एक्साइटेड उसमें लोग दे स्पेशलाइज्ड द राइट पेपर्स अबाउट इंट्रिकेसीज ऑफ डेट रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग मगर बहुत ही बात ये है कि एट द मोमेंट अगर लो इनकम कंट्रीज को ऑफ ले सो आई वुड से अबाउट Thirty of them have debt issues. Unka jo debt repayments hai, they are very high. They are having difficulty, but they are managing. Three charon ne ye koshish ki hai to ask for debt restructuring. Zambia there is one of them. Uh, Chad was another one of them. Ab ye Sri Lanka next door to us is another one of them. It's taken them over a year, sometimes two years. to negotiate the process us zaroor market se to zaire koi paise nahi milta bilateral creditors bhi haath rok lete hain us zaroor 
because they are supposed to be thinking ke karna kya IMF can't do a program during that period because as soon as you get into that issue IMF has to wait for what they call financing assurances financing assurances ka kya matlab ki bhai before they go to the board they have to say ke this is the debt agreement that this country has reached with its debtors to IMF wale bhi insaaf kar rahe i was on a call the other day with somebody from sri lanka and she was saying ke it's been hell for us for the past year because nobody has been giving any support while we are trying to get the americans and the chinese to agree ke bhai wo who is going to share how much of the debt burden because creditors is the concern here na ke they, nobody wants to give more relief than the other creditor ab isme ek problem ho gaya वो ये कि पहले तो पेरिस क्लब में इट वाज अ ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल मोस्टली ओ कंट्रीज यूएस यूरोप जापान दे न्यू हाउ टू वर्क दे हैव बीन डूइंग दिस फॉर मेनी मेनी इयर्स दे हैव गुड प्रोसेसेस दे अंडरस्टैंड द थिंग नाउ इन मोस्ट कंट्रीज द बिगेस्ट क्रेडिटर इज नॉट एनी ऑफ दीज कंट्रीज द बिगेस्ट क्रेडिटर इज एज यू वन नो चाइना चाइना इज नॉट बीन हिस्टोरिकली पार्ट ऑफ दिस क्लब so when you say to them we're going to restructure debt in sri lanka and here's how the paris club works the chinese say that that may be how the paris club works but you know we work in a different way and they have lots of agencies in china they are different exim bank the china development bank to or a company i saw but so they are taking time to reach agreement and because of that everybody else is waiting as well so the current status of debt restructuring is you read any article people will say ke it doesn't really work well but they also say ke bhai iske alawa aur kuch hai bhi nahi hamare paas so my sense is it doesn't work well now ek saal baad this still won't work well so we should just think ke it's a very difficult path to go down before don't go there my advice for anyone is इस रास्ते पे जाने से पहले आप बाकी सारे रास्ते और एक्सप्लोर कर लें क्योंकि इस रास्ते में काफी मरल है वेरी गुड सो डिप डेट इज स्ट्रक्चरिंग शुड बी द लास्ट ऑप्शन नॉट द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन जैसे टेलीविजन पे कहा जाता है कि डॉक्टर साहब बस डेट रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग कर ले कल जैसे सुबह जाके मांगेंगे और शाम को हम बहुत सारा पैसा लेके आ जाएंगे आई थिंक वी शुड रिवाइज दैट ऑप्शन बट एक और डेट स्टैन टू नदर डायरेक्शन एक और बात बताइए कि आपने आईएमएफ पे बड़े साल देखा पाकिस्तान को और बारीकी से देखा सच यू वर द डायरेक्टर तो आपने पाकिस्तान को काफी प्रोग्राम दो तीन प्रोग्राम तो मेरे ख्याल आपने देखे हैं ये जरा लोगों को बता दीजिए कि व्हाट इज योर असेसमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान रिलेशनशिप विद द आईएमएफ एंड किस तरह वो कैसे हमने इंप्लीमेंट किया प्रोग्राम की नौत क्या थी और क्या थोड़ा सा हमें सिनाप्सिस दे दें यह मुश्किल सवाल क्या रहे सो Look, you had a chart there. I think it was. Uh, I'm trying to recall which which of your two colleagues made that analogy. Mm-hmm. It was you who said it. Okay. IMF tour is very much like the emergency room of the international financial system, and the IMF programs in Pakistan, of which there have been 24. they are quite successful in achieving one thing which is that one year after they start you find that the macroeconomic imbalances the balance of payments problem particularly gets largely contained how does this happen economy slows down imports go down reserves begin to build up so the risk of a balance of payments problem gets receded but when you go to the emergency room every few months suppose you're you're running a hospital somebody shows up at the emergency room first time you fix them and you say thank you very much bye bye fir wo aata hai koi teen mahine baad same problem ab nahi ke bhai ye to main fix kar deta hu but you know these are the things you have to do to fix your ताकि ये दोबारा ना हो प्रॉब्लम यू हैव टू स्टार्ट वॉकिंग टेन थाउजेंड स्टेप्स एवरी डे 
अब आपका फोन आपको बता देगा कि आप टेन थाउजेंड स्टेप कर रहे हैं कि नहीं कर रहे प्लीज स्टे ऑफ ऑल द हाई कोलेस्ट्रॉल फूड दैट यू आर ईटिंग ट्राई टू रिड्यूस अ बेटर स्ट्रेस एंड स्टॉप स्मोकिंग प्लीज तो गाइस सजा एब्सोल्यूटली लेट्स राइट इट डाउन ये सारी चीजें देन फॉर अबाउट टू थ्री वीक्स दे प्रोसेस्ट उसके बाद दे थिंग्स गेट ईजियर लाइफ इज बेटर गो बैक टू दूर थिंग्स so they back three months later then you say did you do any of these things it was very difficult but now i'm really committed to doing it ugly the fuck phir aap short term fix kar dete and then you have the same problem so my friend the problem is all programs with pakistan by and large do well in the first 18 months which is the phase of immediate stabilization उसके बाद द डिफिकल्ट थिंग्स हैव टू बी डन कहो जी व्हाट अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट योर एनर्जी सेक्टर इज ब्लीडिंग दैट्स व्हाट्स कॉजिंग अ प्रॉब्लम योर टैक्स इवन आई हैव हैड अ लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग डिस्कशन अबाउट वेदर टैक्सेस आर टू हाई इन पाकिस्तान और नॉट और टू लो बट एनीवे योर एक्सपेंडिचर एक्सीड्स योर इनकम सो यू कीप बोरोइंग यू हैव टू फिक्स दिस यू गॉट ऑल दीस इंपेडिमेंट्स व्हिच स्टॉप योर एक्सपोर्ट्स फ्रॉम ग्रोइंग Here are the things we agreed you would do, and then we got all of these state-owned enterprises that are basically losing money and need to fix those. So we have a long list of things. The state bank needs to be autonomous, etc. And then you say, "Okay, what about doing these?" So then you start to do them, and then you feel there's lots of pressure from different lobbies. You know, you want to go and put some tax on agriculture. You get your friends coming from there and say, "Okay, but any, yeah, so you know, I'm already paying taxes." Then you want to go and do something with the traders. The traders say, "Okay, yeah, so I'm paying already a lot." Zulmora. After that, you want to raise energy prices, and, and it's very hard to do it because most people can't afford the energy bill as it is. so you start slowing down on these things because politically it's hard to do these things also you discover that by that your reserves are not bad you know they've improved a bit then the imf comes along with the next review i think they're coming next week imf comes along for the next review and they say what well, aren't you running behind on all of these things that you promised and you say well uh, no but actually we have started this and that we've got a study underway So it happens. This dance goes for a little while, and then you say, "Ki I think the best thing is that now, for a little bit, allow it to go. Aram se, you go, we go, we go. Let the program lapse. Then it lapses for a while. In the meantime, of course, jo jo cheese se problem ho raha tha, wo apne boye dobara shuru kar di. Three years later, you show up again saying, "Ki sorry, actually, we have another problem now." So. I think the history of the IMF in Pakistan is that they've actually been very successful at preventing a crisis. Now let me say, but not very successful at changing the way the economy functions. Let me just say one other thing because I know a lot of my friends say, you know, the problem with these IMF people is that why don't you guys just stop? Let there be a crisis because it's only after a crisis that people change. So how can you not be just for that? If you really believe that the people don't do these things, then why, why do you keep coming to our help every time? Because it prevents us from doing the deep reform. It's a serious question. So I just want you to think about the following two things in answering that question. पहली बात तो ये कि when there is a crisis, a real default, a real payments crisis, I have seen it in some countries. Who are the people who get hurt? Actually, most of the people in this room will manage. But it's people outside this room, जिनकी कोई safety net नहीं है. They are the ones who get hurt. I'll give you an example of a country like Lebanon. You know, Lebanon, long time people were saying they were living beyond their means. They had a crisis about four years ago. Ninety percent of Lebanon is now below the poverty line. So ordinary people are the ones who get hurt. The other thing is that it is true that many reform efforts, deep reform efforts, only start after a crisis. That's the, that's the evidence. If you look at the econometric evidence across countries, it's true. But 
it's also true that not every crisis leads to reform. Yes, Lebanon is another example. Four years ago, people thought that if there is a crisis, these people will finally get together and do something. But four years later, nothing. Somalia, there was a crisis. Twenty years later, they were doing nothing. So I think it's a bit risky to assume that if a crisis happens, then we we'll get together and do the reform because it may happen. But it is possible that it may not happen. And if it doesn't happen, the people who pay the price are actually going to be ordinary people. So I, I'm a little cautious about this argument. That by a pandemic crisis, it's okay. Yes, sir. This is a very interesting discussion. But let's see very quickly. Let me take the first issue. You are saying that all the no, no, but most of the issues that arise in a implementation of successful stabilisation program, and B, trying to have a consistent, um, uh, sustainable growth path. Bilkul sahi ka. But you've seen many reform programs around the world. Okay, take China for example, India. How is it you've seen our growth? चार तभी शोध लो के हम ऐसे जिगजैग करते जाते हैं लाइक रोलर कोस्टर चाइना का बात ऐसे क्या है हम में और उनमें फर्क जो के हम ये कर सक रहे ये वो आइडेंटिफाई करें फ्रॉम योर ब्रॉड एक्सपीरियंस द ग्लोबल रिफॉर्म प्रोसेस व्हाट इज़ इट दैट वी शुड डू एंड वी कैन डू और आई थिंक इट्स इसे हार्ड टू पिक � few things and say, okay, yeah, this is the key to growth, you know. I come back to one point that I made earlier, let me add a caution. So, the first point is that okay, you keep your macro stable, get it out of the way, don't let the macro become an obsession, you know. But it's valid to you, you just have to sort out your basics. The other thing is that you have to focus on laying out a medium term path which is credible that investors believe in that you believe in that you have a broad consensus for you know pakistan there is a lot of discussion of having a national economic charter national economic agenda we, we don't really have a, a national economic charter of any consequence ki jisse aap keh sake ke bhai jo bhi government aayegi of course every government has at the margin some differences but basically, this is the direction in which we are going to go. The quite important is that you have to have a level of investment. So let's, let's take a very simple thing. There was one chart that was very interesting chart you put up earlier, which showed investment rates. I think we have the lowest investment rate on that chart. And actually, we have a very low investment rate compared to the rest of the world. So, if you don't invest, how will you have growth? You can't really grow without investing. There's no magic way that you're going to generate growth and development. And if you don't grow, you really don't have an improvement in the human condition. A lot of people who work in and around development, they say, you know, growth is no obsession. Growth really is not what we want. It's about inequality, it's about poverty, it's about social conditions, human development. Don't be so focused on growth. But the evidence, my friend, is that if you look at the improvement in all of these indicators, they're very hard to achieve without improving the level of economic activity. So, one thing I worry about is that we are losing focus on the importance of growth. And actually, it's one of the, my beefs with the economic profession in development economics is that most of the work that is now done in development economics, most of the PhDs that are being done in development economics are being done on specific intervention, RCTs, you know, these random control trials that या अगर हम इस तरह करें या इस तरह करें तो क्या फर्क पड़ता है? Sustain higher growth rates because without high growth you can't get any of these good things. 
that's something on which we are less focused than I think we should be. So I would say that keeping up eye on the medium term and having predictability and consistency is very important. You referred to the obligation of the IMF to kind of ensure that the poor are protected, to ensure that the poor are protected. This is a mission that the World Bank has too. Doesn't that kind of create a disintermediation that the local population or the local elite or the local governance system, whatever you may, are not responsible for the poor but international agencies are? How would you react to that? So I would say, look, there are two things here. If the UK, for a long time, when the IMF, this is more IMF than World Bank, I would say. So I don't know whether anybody is here from the World Bank or the IMF, but I, if they are, they can speak for themselves. But uh, when the IMF used to do programs, you know, by definition, let, let's be clear about this, by definition, when you start an IMF program which is trying to stabilize the economy, that's another fancy term for simply saying you're trying to cut back on aggregate demand because you have an imbalance. You're spending more money than you have, you're importing more than you're exporting, so you have to slow down the economy. And initially, the IMF used to say, we don't care how you do it, here's a fiscal target, abhi sat, sat percent Next year it should be five, year after it should be four, then it will be three, it will be stable after that. But we don't really care how you do it. And then a lot of NGOs started saying, okay, it's not just a question of going from seven to five to three, but where do you cut your spending? How you cut your spending matters. Because sometimes you can cut spending that affects poor people more. And so they looked at a lot of IMF programs and they said, look, in these IMF programs, the expenditures on health and education went down because the government cut those. And then the IMF said, okay, fair enough, that's a good point. Uh, we need to find a way of protecting the way you've got spending, you have to protect the health and expenditures and spending on the poor. So for example, in Pakistan, they insisted, if I recall right, that BISP spending needed to be protected because it was a way of providing cash transfers to the poor. So I think that's why they were focused. Now you have a much more difficult question, which is, don't countries care about their own poor people? Why should anybody else have to care about them when the countries are caring themselves? So I just leave that as a question for you. Do you feel confident that in all those spending decisions that are being made and all the taxation decisions that are being made, that people are thinking first and foremost of the poor? It's a good question for you to think about. Sir, in Punjabi University, I was asking this question. आप डेवलपमेंट की बात कर रहे थे हम अगर बीएस करते हैं पाकिस्तानी एजुकेशन सिस्टम है उसमें जो इकोनॉमिक्स है हम वेस्टर्न इकोनॉमिक्स पढ़ते हैं तो उसमें उसकी प्रॉब्लम्स भी होती हैं सॉल्यूशंस भी होते हैं कि वो किस तरह डेवलप हो रही हैं और वो किस तरह मूव कर रही हैं अगर वो डेवलपिंग थी और डेवलप हुई वो इकोनॉमीज जब हम पाकिस्तानी सिस्टम्स की प्रॉब्लम्स को भी नहीं पढ़ेंगे उसकी स्टडीज को भी नहीं पढ़ेंगे तो हम हमारी जो यूथ है उसकी डेवलपमेंट में किस तरह कंट्रीब्यूशन होगा? इस एक बहुत जनरल प्रॉब्लम इन इकोनॉमिक्स टुडे, व्हिच इस दैट इन अ लॉट ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटीज, द टीचिंग ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स इस क्वाइट रिमूव्ड फ्रॉम द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स दैट पीपल फेस व्हेन दे लीव यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड इन द यूएस फॉर एग्जांपल इन द यूक there's a whole movement of how can we make the teaching of economics, the learning of economics in universities more aligned with the problem. I mean, you could go through a four-year course in economics and have no idea 
of what the world is actually doing right now in some universities. And I think, I hope that, I mean, I, I'm not sure how you're resolving that issue here, but I want to say that I think it's a real issue that needs to be addressed. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. I'm sorry we have little time left. We have to move on to the next session. But thank you very much for taking time out and coming to Pakistan. Subscribe and press the bell icon so that no news will be left.